If you've shot any motion picture film, whether that be 8mm, 16mm, or 35mm, the process consists of you shooting the film, sending it off to a lab, and then you will be given the choice of receiving a log scan of your footage. That way, you have complete control over the full range of information in your negative. Once you receive the scan, at the very least, you would then bring it into an NLE of your choice, add in some contrast, fix the exposure, maybe add in some saturation, and if you shot with the tungsten film in daylight without an 85B filter, your footage might look a little on the cooler side, so you would just manipulate the temperature to warm it up. Once you make those adjustments to taste, your footage should now look natural and is able to be viewed correctly and posted on the web. Now what I've done is created my own interpretation of this workflow so that you can use it with your digital footage. I convert your footage into a flat lab scan and you make simple adjustments to land at an image you're happy with. Hi, I'm going to go ahead and very quickly just showcase the workflow in both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. After, I will also be showing you a from scratch method that follows the same kind of model for you to try out. If you do decide to purchase, there will be an included full length tutorial just going through each step of the emulation. That way you can feel more comfortable and can get the most out of it. So once you've installed and set everything up, the only thing to do before you can start grading is going into the lab scan, going over to LUT, and this is where you're going to select the camera profile that corresponds to your footage. This for instance is red log footage, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And you can see how nice our colors are looking already. Now let me show you how easy it is to get nice looking footage with just the white balance and contrast node. So let's go over to contrast, and there's tons of ways of adding contrast. The way that I like to do it is going under contrast, just bumping that up, and then we're going to go over to the pivot, move that over to the left to kind of just spread our information. And let me just make sure my waveform is looking good. There you go. Now we're going to go over to the white balance node and just warm up our footage using the temperature. I'm going to leave it at around 200, I think. And just like that, I mean, the colors and skin tones are looking beautiful. There's lots of color separation. The colors are very dense. And again, we got there through just these two notes. Now you have another two notes here that you can use. Um, first one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is where you're going to fix any exposure issues. And this split tone node is here for you to just have fun with your footage and start implementing some unique looks. For instance, here, I'm going to go under our offset and just bring up the magenta a tad bit. Super subtle, but it does help with the color separation. Let me select these three nodes just so you can see where we started and where we ended. And we did that super quick and easy. You could end there, but you also have more options if you go under lap scan. And here you essentially just have more nodes that can help sell the film look or give you a certain interpretation of film that you're looking for. For instance, this 500T node, the power grade is already based off of the 500T film stock, but if you want to lean more into that look, this is here for you to uh, play around with. And most of these nodes here, they're set at a lower output so that if you wanted to, you could go in and raise the output to lean more into that certain look. We also have 250D, and this is just gonna place your tones to be more in line with as if you shot with a daylight film stock. And then again, after that, just more options for you to play around with and to use to sell the film look even more. The tutorial will give you a rundown of everything here and what exactly everything does. But if you really wanted to, you could just stop at this first page. The two most important nodes really are just the contrast 
and the white balance because this is where you're going to bring the most out of your image. Here's another clip just so I can show you how I exactly use a power grade. So I'm going to go into contrast, move my pivot up. I'm going to go under my log wheels and drop the blacks a tad bit. I'm going to go under white balance. We're going to actually accentuate the blue tones a little bit. So we're going to just move this over to the right just a tad bit. We can toggle this on and off and you can see how rich the blues are. And then I'm going to go under split tone and you can see that our blacks, they're still taking on this kind of bluish tint, which is fine. But since we already have so much blue in the sky and the pavement, I'm going to actually go ahead over here and I'm just going to warm this up just slightly. And if I turn this on and off, you can see that now the blacks have taken on this reddish look, which can just help with the color separation. And I'm actually going to go back into my contrast and again, drop my shadows just a tiny bit more. This is also a good shot to show you the halation. So you actually have three methods of halation that you can look at and see which works best for your footage. Here's the first super subtle, but it gets the job done. Second is a lot stronger. And the third is the strongest. And each one is its own unique method. So it's not just increasing in intensity. It's good to have the choice so you can see what works best with each shot. Let me zoom in here just so you can see how nice the grain is looking. I'm super pleased with where I got these grain settings to sit at. Anytime I use a grain, I usually always use the dust node along with it. This is some footage I already went ahead and color corrected, but I'm going to show you another method of contrast that I like to use a lot. If you really like that Cineon flatter look, you'll be able to get that within this power grade by going under the log and then just dropping the shadows. And you can see that now we're leaning more in towards that Cineon look in terms of our contrast. We're going to take a look at one more clip in DaVinci so you can see how flexible this workflow is. I'm going to add in the contrast, move the pivot, and actually instead of white balancing here, what I'm going to do is white balance under the split tone. So I'm going to warm this up. I'm going to let this sit somewhere around here. In the tutorial, I go through the difference between white balancing here compared to white balancing here. But essentially white balancing here at the end is going to lead to a more pushed film look and it's kind of going to dirty up your frame a little bit but in the best way possible now i'm going to go into a lab scan and select the 250d node and you can see it just kind of cleans up the tones and our blacks i really want to pull out these reds from the flowers so i'm going to go under color density select this and just look at how dense those reds are i'm also going to select the black promis node just to add a little bit of softness and I'm also going to select a D55. And maybe if this is a little too pushed for you, then you know you could go in here under color density. And rather than adding in saturation, we're going to up the color density by lowering the saturation. Then we're going to head to the first page and we're going to turn off the split tone node. And we're going to white balance here because it's going to give us a more accurate color temperature change. And now we have this really vintage feel going on. So hopefully that gave you a glimpse at just how flexible and powerful this workflow is and how streamlined it could be to get you the film look you're going after. So the workflow is going to differ slightly in Premiere Pro, but all you're going to do is go into creative. You're going to go over to this look and you're going to browse. You're going to find our LUT pack and you're going to have two folders with LUTs, the 500T and the 250D. The 500T is going to be a little cooler and the 250D is going to look a lot more balanced for daylight footage. We're going to go ahead and choose the 500T. Once you apply, this is what you're going to see. So now we're going to go under basic corrections and we're just going to color correct this image. I'm going to add some contrast, bring up the whites quite a bit, drop our black slightly. Let's scroll through the footage. You can see it's already looking really nice. The only other thing to do is to go ahead and warm up the image. You can see how nice the skin tones are getting. I think I'm going to leave it somewhere around there. And there you go. That's really all it is. I'm going to reset all this. And now we're going to go with the 250D LUT and you can go ahead and just select your camera profile. Now that that's been placed, you can see how much more balanced in terms of color temperature this is compared to the 500T version. I'm now going to head and do the exact same color correction that I did with the 500T minus the color temperature change. And just with that, we're just about done. 
I'm going to go through one more clip in Premiere Pro just again to show you just how easy this is. We applied the 500T. I'm going to bring up the exposure. Bring in that contrast. Move my blacks down slightly and move my whites up a bit. Then just going to warm this up and move the tint over. And there you go. I'm now going to go ahead and show you how to achieve a base emulation from scratch in DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to make four nodes. We're going to separate these two and we're going to go over to this second node. We're going to drop a color space transform and we're going to go with AirLog C for my footage. We're going to go to output color space and this is going to be Rec 709 and output gamma is going to be Cineon. There you go. And if you've messed with film emulation in the past, this is going to seem similar, but rather than going with a print film emulation under film looks and choosing one of these Rec 709, we're actually going to do something different because there is a film look that is a lot less contrasty and a lot softer, and it follows the workflow that we spoke about earlier. So let's name these really quick. We're going to name this Cineon. And now everything before this Cineon node is going to be anything that is found within a film negative. So any characteristic, any trait that you can emulate is going to go before here. The two important ones for me are grain and halation. And in my opinion, these are the only two required to sell the film look. So we're going to use the halation node found within the effects panel, but you do need the full studio version of DaVinci Resolve for this. So if you are using the free version, you can go to my past tutorial where I show you how to create your own halation method. And I'll also leave links in my description to free grain overlays. So we're going to go ahead and go over to basic grain now and append the grain. Then we're going to go over to threshold and this differs from footage to footage, but I'm going to move this over to 0 0.330. Then I'm going to increase the strength and I'm going to increase the spread a tiny bit. And then I'm also going to press fine tune relative spread and increase the green channel just a tiny bit. And right there, our relation is looking really nice. Now that we've done that, the only thing left to do is to make our color corrections. So we're going to call this one white balance and this one contrast. We're first going to go to contrast and Again, there's multiple ways you can do this. For this footage in particular, I'm actually going to use a curve. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop those blacks quite a bit, maybe somewhere around there. And I'm going to drop the lowest parts of our image, drop our whites a tiny bit, and then we're going to gently just raise the middle here. I'm going to drop this a tiny bit more. And we're looking pretty good there. Now we're just going to go over to white balance and just increase the warmth. You can see what we've done just between those two nodes. The contrast is very soft. Although our black point is near crushed, the whole contrast roll off is really nice. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another node. I'm just going to call this high for highlights. And we're going to go to our curves, go over to our red channel, and we're just going to drop this red channel. And if I go ahead and deselect that, you can see this really nice cyan tint to our highlights. As you can see, we have a full-fledged film emulation that isn't using those print film LUTs. This is going to give you a way nicer roll-off and is going to sell the film look. Now, I just want to give my sincerest thanks to anyone who chooses to support me through these products. And I hope you can put them to use and you love it as much as I do. So, um... See you. Bye.